Okay, so from observation. Okay, so now I I I I don't know or we don't know where the tau max is yet. We don't know. Now we have to find. Okay, so now we have to find. Okay, so I'm I'm going to divide this. Okay, so we are going to uh, consider. Okay, we're going to consider. Okay, we're going to consider uh, point B. Okay, we're going to consider point B. Okay, so bear with me. I'm going to I'm going to draw. A box so that why why I say that this is a combination of both okay <laughs> why I say it's a combination of box beam and white flange okay so let me do, 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 do. oh I'm in PowerPoint now let me get your PowerPoint over here I need to introduce a a rectangular you cannot do this on 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 on. Unfortunately, you cannot do this on. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm lost of words now. You cannot do this on. On. Note, okay. You have to do this on. Okay. So let me get rid of this. Okay. So we have a box now. Yeah, we have a box. So I'm covering it because I don't want you all to see the, the, the bottom part. OK, so you all know that it is a box beam complication. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line. OK, so this horizontal line correspond to the centroid. OK, so we're going to construct our shear flow. OK, so this is our V, right? Our shear force is coming from the vertical. Then it's going to split itself. Okay, so we have we 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 know. Can you all see the dot in green? I I think you all can, right? Okay, so we will split this two sides. One go to the left, the other one go to the right. Okay, and this is how the shear flow will move. OK, so we have one start point over here. All right, and then we have two end point over here. End point number one and you have end point number two. OK, so I'm going to cover this. I'm going to cover the bottom part, as you can see now. Oh, shit, the end you can see. see. OK, <laughs> I just that's. Just uh, hold on. Maybe I can do this. Uh, yeah, you cheeky sort. You can't do that, can you? Send, bring to front. Yeah, hey, done. Okay. So now, what you see, right? Remember, our roofs, right? The datum is from the centroid. Hey, it appears again. It's okay. I'm trying to ignore it. Okay, uh, bring to front. Okay, so the datum is the analysis of the datum is always at the centroid, right? And this is the analysis direction, right? <laughs> analysis will start from y max. Yes or no? Right. Let's ignore uh, those arrows. I don't know why it always appear unbelievable. Okay, right. So now we when we consider B, right? When we when we when we consider B, right, the analysis, right, the analysis will be what? Will be the analysis is a box B. Right? We ignore the bottom because the rules that we specify said what right the first moment of area 
cannot cross the what? Cannot cross the centroid. Yes or no? I repeat again. The first moment of area cannot cross the centroid. Okay, that's why I blank it out. Okay, no need to see what is below. Focus what is on top. Okay, and because we call it a box beam analysis, we realize that we we will write down this is going to be what two q. Okay, so two q. So the analysis is a box beam. I need to write down thin wall. Okay, it's two q. Why is it two q? Because one q is going towards the left, the other q go towards the what? The right. Okay. So now we're going to find the shear stress. Okay. Of, of the of the structure at point B. Okay. So shear stress at point B is equal to V Q over I T. And again, the rules apply. Okay. Regardless of the point that you're going to find. I repeat again. Regardless of the points that you're going to investigate, right? Rule number one, B and I are what? Are constant. We can find the, 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 the shear stress at point B. We can find the shear stress at point A. We can find the shear stress at the centroid. V and I are always what? Constant. Very, very important to remember this, okay? So what changes is the Q and the T. Right. So for this case, we also know that the T, right, the T is equal to how much? Can someone tell me what's the thickness, please? Anyone? Zero point two inch. Well done. Okay. The thickness is zero point one. Because this is a what? A thin wall analysis, right? And again, like anyone having headache is always the what? Is always the first moment of area. Okay, Q of B. Okay, so if we look at Q of B, this is the section that I'm going. To, this is the area that we're going to consider. Okay, so like what I uh, what I always propose, I will have my area which is width times depth multiplied by y bar. Okay, so for this case, the width is equal to two inch minus by the the wall per side is 0 0.3 0 0.3 minus by uh let's leave the unit out Eugene what are you doing now so two minus by 0 0.3 minus by 0 0.3 right y'all 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 can't y'all y'all can't see this because let me move on top because the thickness over here you can see where my cursor is right the thickness over here is 0.3 and the other side is 0.3. That's why 2 minus by 0.3 by 0.3. Okay. And then the depth. Okay, the depth is equal to 0.2. Right? The y bar will be 1.5 minus by 0 0.2 divided by 2. Okay. So this will have 2 minus 2 minus 0.3 minus 0.3 times 0.2 times by 1.5 minus 0.1 is equal to 0 0.392 inches to the power of 3. 0 0.392 to the power of 3. Okay. So now, again, the, the, the thing about this is once you got the first moment of area, okay, I particularly, it, it was a thickness, thick beam, will, the, will you use the thickness? Yes. If it's thick beam, use 1.4 coal. You got it there, okay? So from here, the shear stress at point B is equal to uh, V, which we don't know yet. I, I'm too lazy to calculate. Q is equal to 0 0.392. And then the thickness is 0 0.2. And then I have to multiply by a 2, okay? Why I multiply by a 2? Because this is a what? Because box beam got what? 2Q. So this is equal to uh, 0 0.392 divided by 0 0.2 divided by 2. It's equal to 0 0.98. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you did right. 0 0.98 VUI. Okay. As I said, what we are doing now is we are trying to locate the position 
of the maximum shearing stress. Now we don't know yet. Okay, so I'll leave it as this. Right. So the next one is let's let's now say that okay, now I want to find okay, I want to find the centroid. Okay, I will, now I, I, will, I will do the centroid <laughs> two ways. I I repeat again. I'll do the centroid two ways. You guys say uh why two ways? Okay, I I, I want you all to see. Uh, this example is a is a very uh good learning example. Okay. Oh wait wait wait. Let me see. Okay, sorry. I will now do. I will now find the 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 the, the shearing stress at point A first. Okay, I'll do the shearing stress at point. A. So the next thing that we're gonna find, we're gonna find consider point. A, okay, so now I'm going to copy this diagram. Oi, come on, Eugene. Oi, go on. My computer is not behaving today. It's my fault. Okay, hold on. Right, so I'm going to shift this down. Okay, so now we want to find uh, point A now. Okay, we're going to find point A, and then what I'm going to do is this is our bracket okay right then i'm going to draw uh, so this is our cent centroid okay so, so, so our, our, our centroid so we want to find okay so what we want to find now is we're going to find uh consider point a okay we're going to consider point a Okay, we're gonna consider. So now we were con we were still I will still construct our our shear flow. Okay, so I will still construct. So this is my this is still our V, right? So left and right. Okay, now our cover here. Right, I'll cover the top. You can see I cover the top now. So why do we call this now? This is now known as a white flange configuration. Yes or no? Okay. Why this? So why this is called a white flange configuration? You got Q1 over here and you have Q2 over there. They are not related at all. Okay. Why they're not related? Because now, if you look at over here, they have two start points. Start point number one. Start point number two. And then you have end point number two. You have end point number what? Number one. So this make it like a, uh, this make it like a what? A white flange configuration. Yes or no? Right? So from here, that's why the analysis, okay, so from here you write the analysis, right, the analysis is based, is based on white flange, right? Why white flange? Because you have two start points and you have two end points right so if we if we, if we go to if we go to the, the the definition earlier that i've done right down here also got what got two start point you can see that and they also have what two end point okay so now will be based on white flange so once you know that white flange thin wall okay you call this white flange thin wall. You immediately write down. You need, need to consider Q. You don't need to consider the left. You don't need to consider the right. You need to consider Q because Q1 and Q2 on a white flange configuration they are not affected at one another because one have a different start point and a different end point also. Okay. So for this case, the she the shear stress at point A is equal to VQ over it right so again we re apply rule number what rule number uh rule number rule number one v and q are constant now question for you guys 
What is the thickness? The class, you all can hear me, right? What is the thickness? 